Today I'm reviewing the Canon EOS M10 mirrorless camera. The EOS M10 is Canon's least expensive mirrorless camera and competes directly with the extremely popular entry-level Sony A5000. The M10 is an extremely compact camera that weighs in at a little over 300 grams, which is just about half the weight of your typical DSLR. The camera has a 15 to 45 millimeter EFM lens, which covers its 18 megapixel APS-C size sensor. Now this is the same exact sensor you'd find on a DSLR like the Canon T5i. So you're pretty much getting DSLR quality images without having to lug around the extra weight. Well, at least that's what Canon's trying to do. One thing to note though is that this camera uses Canon's EFM lens mount, which is used on its entire lineup of EOS M cameras. So if you do happen to have Canon EF or EFS lenses, you're going to need an adapter to use those lenses on this camera. I'll leave a link to one below. The lens on this camera has a locking stowaway design, which makes it even more compact when you're carrying it around. And when you're ready to shoot, press this button and twist the lens to release the lock. The body on the EOS M is made from plastic, but is actually pretty well built. There isn't much of a grip on the camera, but since it doesn't weigh very much, and since it's actually pretty well balanced, it's surprisingly comfortable to hold. Now I will say that having tested the Sony A5000 last year, the Sony is a bit lighter than the M10 and definitely has a better grip. Nevertheless, the Canon is still very easy to handle. You have a mode dial, power button, shutter button, and record button on the top face with a handy pop-up flash to the left. The camera's interface and viewfinder is the three inch color touchscreen on the rear face. I really like how sharp and bright this display is, even when using it outdoors in the bright sunlight. And the touchscreen is also very responsive, almost like any smartphone with a touchscreen. The menus and options are laid out in Canon's typical style and are very easy to navigate. And the display also flips up, making it very useful for selfies and vlogs. Another thing I really like about the EOS M10 is that they've left the SD card slot on the side of the camera instead of burying it in with the battery on the bottom. This makes it very easy to pop the SD card out, especially when the camera is mounted to a tripod. It also has a mini HDMI port to connect it to a TV or monitor and a mini USB port to connect it to a computer on the left face. The Canon LPE12 battery lives in this compartment on the bottom, which is right next to a standard quarter 20 tripod mount. In terms of still images, the camera shoots 18 megapixel stills in both the J JPEG and RAW formats. You can also simultaneously store both a JPEG and RAW file for the same image. And when it comes to image quality, the Canon EOS M10 really shines. Since most beginners will probably use the camera in the automatic mode, I took all these shots in the auto mode just to see how the camera would perform right out of the box. The images were all very sharp, well exposed, and had a very pleasing aesthetic about them. In Canon's typical style, the colors were all very natural and the white balance was pretty accurate. And thanks to that large APS-C sensor, it produced a nice soft background for the shots. And personally, I prefer the aesthetic of the photos from the M10 to that of the Sony A5000. And even in low light without the flash turned on, the camera produced pretty impressive images as you can see here. However, the process of getting good pictures is a whole lot more irritating. EOS M cameras, ever since the original EOS M, which I tested a few years ago, have always struggled with focus, speed, and accuracy. And the EOS M10 has the same exact issues. The autofocus system is painfully slow and pretty inaccurate, and this can get very irritating very fast. Every now and then, it will completely lose focus and then hunts to regain focus, especially with images that have a lot of things in the shot. The focusing speed speed isn't even remotely close to modern mirrorless cameras from Sony and Panasonic. This was frankly a huge disappointment. When it comes to video, it can shoot full HD video at 30 and 24 frames per second and 720p HD video at 60 frames per second for slow motion shots. And just like the photos, the videos it produced were absolutely gorgeous. Everything was sharp and the colors were very natural and you could shoot video with a nice soft depth of field for that cinematic look. But as with photos, the focusing system made the whole process very annoying. The continuous servo autofocus is almost completely useless, and I recommend turning that off entirely. What is really helpful, though, is that you can focus manually using the focus ring, and Canon now has focus peaking built into the camera. This really helps a lot, and folks who are willing to invest the effort of focusing manually can get really great results. And thanks to the flip screen, it's an extremely useful vlogging camera.
The built-in microphone on the Canon EOS M10 is actually pretty decent and this is very important especially since the camera doesn't have a port to plug in an external microphone. The EOS M10 does come with Wi-Fi so you can technically connect the camera to your phone or tablet and view pictures on the camera or control the camera remotely. However, the app is extremely clunky and loses connection to the camera often. I wouldn't even recommend using it. So my overall thoughts about the Canon EOS M10. The M10 is a nice compact camera that's full of great and useful features and also produces amazing photos and videos. However, the auto focusing system is a real disappointment. It just makes the process of taking photos and video much more slow and irritating. So what do I recommend? I really can't recommend the EOS M10 at this time. For those who are upgrading from smartphones or point and shoot cameras and want an entry level compact mirrorless camera, I recommend the Sony A5000 or Sony A5100. Those cameras will get you very similar results without the sluggishness of the EOS M10. And if you're looking to start out as an amateur photographer, I'd recommend a DSLR like the Nikon D3400, which retails for around the same price as the EOS M10. I'll leave links to all those cameras below. Hope this review was useful. If it was, please hit that like button and subscribe to stay tuned for more reviews, unboxings, and how-to videos. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.